Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. If you're new to us, welcome. Art and Talk is all about meeting artists and being inspired. We embrace the traditional arts and the spiritual arts to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and to be inspired by. If you've been watching us for a while, thank you so much for your continued support. And as you know, we dive deep into our guest artist journey and we find out all about their art, their voice, their message, and their process. All right, so let's go ahead and get started today. Uh, we're excited to bring you a musician who is a singer songwriter, and he has an album out that we'll be discussing called The Marrow in My Bones, and he'll be performing a couple of songs for us as well. And as always, we'll be diving deep into his journey and finding all about his music. All right, so let's go ahead and get started again. Thank you for being with us. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Dominic Delaney. Hi, Dominic. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, it's awesome to have you here. All right. So where would you like to start as far as um, your style is acoustic punk rock? That's really like your flavor where you get really excited and, and um, where you express yourself. So uh, tell us about tell us all about why you are attracted to that style and a little bit about your musical journey, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, when it comes to my style of music, um, acoustic punk, or sometimes I call it campfire punk rock, um, it's it's something that um, I've always wanted to do. I've been playing guitar since I was really young, and um, it's nice to have that freedom of being able to do things in a live band context, but also being able to strip it back and play the same songs um, solo um i take inspiration from guys like frank turner who's another singer songwriter um you know uh the dropkick murphys bands like no effects things like that and um it's it's just something where i feel that i can express myself the best way through this type of uh, medium mm -hmm. and now what uh, in terms of acoustic um, punk rock. Do you know anybody else like in your circles? Because I know you you play a lot. You've been doing a lot of traveling, so you interact a lot with musicians. And have you found out that there's you know a lot more of this kind of surfacing? Or tell us a little bit about kind of like bringing those two genres kind of like together. Yeah, absolutely. There's um you know the genre of folk punk um is is similar um in ways and um, I've come across quite a few artists you know mainly like the homeless gospel choir is a band um, that started very similar to how I did where uh, the songs start as acoustic songs and then become full band songs um, and I think in, in a lot of other circles sometimes it's the other way around where it starts as a full band song and then it comes down to a stripped back version um, so yeah I've had a lot of interactions especially while traveling um, I, I have found that just by the logistics of it, um, touring is a lot easier solo. Um, it's hard to have six or five or six grown adults um, leave for months on end. Um, so I do meet a lot of people that are in a similar boat as I am. Tell us a little bit about... Um... So you were playing guitar since you were young. I'm just kind of wondering the first time you went on stage, um, do you have like a memorable moment before we, you know, uh, actually get to hear you perform and dive a little more into your music? Like, did you feel at home? Was this like something you would thought of when you play guitar? Like that's just the next step or any like really cool, like hallmark moments, like way in the beginning? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I vividly remember the first time that I played my, mom had taken me to a coffee shop down here um, called Coffee District. And I do remember um, not really having stage fright or anything like that, but feeling very at place in that um, I was able to get my message across. Um, and that was probably at about like 13 or so. Um, and my mom kept bringing me to, to places to open mics and different things like that. I remember a lot of bars, they would, um, let me go first and then I had to leave, um, things like that. So yeah, I've always felt comfortable on stage. It kind of feels like it's almost where I'm untouchable. Um, I feel that um, 
everything I want to say can come out the way I mean it on stage. And um, I, I kept going to those open mics. And then funnily enough, when I came back to playing um, acoustic guitar and, and being a songwriter again, um, the first place I played was that coffee shop again. And it was still open. And that was, you know, maybe four or five years ago. Um, and the guy remembered me. He said, I remember you being a little 13 year old kid playing here. So, yeah. That's a really cool story, Dominic. I mean, really coming full circle. And it sounds like we really have to give a high five to your mom. It sounds like she was really encouraging and kind of bringing you around, as you were saying, to some places and kind of like helping to kind of keep that fire going and, and giving you that support. Yeah, absolutely. She was great. Um, her and my, my dad, my dad was um, very musically inclined. Um, he took me to my first concert. They both took me to my first concert, which was a uh, BB King and Jeff Beck. Um, when I was probably about 10 years old. And I remember kind of telling my dad, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and granted, I can never play guitar like either of those guys, but um, being on stage is something that I knew I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I'm so glad you shared that. So the BB King Jeff Beck was kind of like that moment where you're like, that's what I want to do. Yeah, it was definitely the light switch. And, um, you know, seeing those guys just... Uh, it was it to this day it was probably the best concert i ever went to i mean those guys are, were legends bb king was a legend jeff is still a legend and um you know i i tried to do the the guitar virtuoso thing for a while and quickly realized that um guitar solos are hard <laughs> uh so that's where it came down to um you know i do still play electric guitar here and there but for, predominantly it's all acoustic guitar and, um, you know, I've been playing for the majority of my life and still I learn something new every day from it. So. So the stage is really your home. And you were saying, Dominic, that you really are able to get your message across. What is your message that you want to convey through your music? I think it's uh, it's a, it's a split between telling people who I am and figuring out who I am myself. Um, there's a lot of times where I can write a song and then look back and be like, oh, you know, that's who I am. And um, it's it's been, um, it's a little crass to say that it's been public therapy, but to an extent it has been, um, where I've dealt with lots of things by writing songs about it and then performing that. And some of the best moments are after a show when someone comes up and says, hey, I really related to this or something like that. Um, that's really important to me. And, you know, a lot of the musicians that I look up to um, are because I find songs that I can relate to and that speak to me. So when somebody says that one of my songs did that for them, it's a huge compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like they can relate to it. And so it sounds like your, your music is, uh, you know, has like a healing component in that it's like, um, you know, therapy in a sense, and it's, it's self-discovery, it's learning about yourself, and then in process, you know, bringing others, bringing your audience, your listeners, and, and those that, that follow you um, to also that point, and that, that's really a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's a lot of, um, a lot of my writing is kind of honestly autobiographical and um that that's something that's always been important to me in music is you know i don't need to exaggerate things or 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 tell these you know miraculous stories that may not have happened when there's a lot more beauty in like the truth and finding certain meanings in, in different situations in life Mm -hmm. So everything is really primarily what it sounds like is, is really coming from what you're experiencing, maybe in the moment things are going on, or maybe things that you have experienced, and you just kind of bring that sense of authenticity to your music and in the hope that others will relate to it. And as you were saying that, you know, how uh, many times they do. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of, I guess, what the underlying message would always be is that we're not alone, you know, um, while each of us may feel isolated at times, uh, there's certain times where you can hear or even see a piece of art and and realize that somebody else understands the exact same, whether it be struggle or triumph that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's that 
connectivity going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about your album. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to pull up the cover and let's have you uh, talk about it. And then we'll jump into um, one of your songs. Give me just a moment and I'll go ahead and pull it up. Okay. Yeah. So um, I actually had my, my good friend, Lucy, um, who is my tattoo artist. She's done the majority of my tattoo work. Um, when I had the idea for the album cover, I knew I wanted her to draw it. And um, with the title being The Marrow in My Bones, I thought it would be cool to kind of have the, the, the skull portrait done. And she knocked it out of the park. She's great. Um, she's also done a couple of my tour flyers and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think she did an amazing job with it. Mm hmm yeah, definitely. Now, what is the marrow in my bones about? Like the cover is amazing and, and I love the artistry. Let's dive a little bit into what is it about? So um, the title came from one of the lines in um, my song, Play Hard, Play Honest, where the line is, I dig deep in my bones to the marrow in every cell I own. And um, that was the first song that I wrote for the album. And it was directly inspired um, by a quote that Frank Turner had signed on my dad's guitar, he wrote play hard, play honest. And um, that, that was kind of the template for the entire album was to, you know, do this to the best of my ability, do it blatantly honest, even if, you know, sometimes that doesn't paint myself in the best light or paint other people in the best light, but um, the songs are true and uh, they, you know, they wouldn't be the songs they are if, if that honesty was lacking or, or made up in any way. So um, that was that was pretty much the, right away. That was going to be the, the clear title for the album. Um, and then that motif kind of followed through into all the other songs where, um, you know, I talk about, you know, one of my songs, Sad Songs, is one that I get a lot of people come up and say they relate to that one. Um, it talks about losing a friend, trying to help someone, struggling with addiction, um, you know, and it's it's a very tough subject and it's a tough song to play as as both of my friends in that song have since passed away. And um, I, it was gonna be taken off the album out of respect because one of my friends passed very recently, but her mother uh, pretty much shook me and said, how dare you think of taking that song off? So that made it even that much more important to me. And so when someone comes up and relates to that song, it's a very real and very tangible uh, connection. Yeah, yeah, thank you for sharing that. All right, I think this would be a great moment, Dominic. Let's go ahead and hear one of your songs and will this be from the marrow in, in my bones? Yes, yeah, so this, uh, this one's gonna be, um, Yes, this is off the album. This one's called Have My Back. We all know this is long overdue. Been through the ringer, but I pulled through. I'm just pounds on the ground, so I call you. We head out of the town. I'm trying hard not to think I can see the signs rolling in And if I have too much to drink Will you have my back again? We all thought we'd be rich one day Alpha Bay, we were right, we were right, we were right all along. Living is easy, one more song. Time now that was ages ago. I'm working this machine to a thousand shows. Now I write, we were right, we were right all along. Living is easy for one more song, and I'm trying hard not to think. I can see the signs rolling in, and if I have to. Trying hard not to think 
I can see the signs rolling in And if I have too much to drink Will you have my back again? I'm trying hard not to think I can see the signs rolling in And if I have too much to drink Will you have my back again? Trying hard not to think I can see the signs rolling in And if I have too much to drink Will you have my back again? awesome Dominic thank you very much yeah that was great you know it's just um I have to say you know I've been listening on your uh Spotify and uh listening to Mirror My Bones the last couple days really enjoying it and you have such a great energy and um you know now um you know watching you perform um it's just you know you're very very strong presence and you just you know you give it your heart and soul thank you I really appreciate that yeah yeah absolutely um, let's tap into your uh, songwriting, because um, that's a whole another avenue that's really um, strong for you as well. So we know it's a lot of your, um, you know, what's going on with you. It's a lot of personal things that you share. Um, and so you, you, you bring that sense of um, reality and authenticity in, in regards to your life. Um, but let's talk about the process itself. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I've always um, considered songwriting to kind of being like capturing a, a picture of lightning where it's um, it's something that takes a lot of practice, but at the same time, when you try and dive into it, or at least for me, if I try and dive into too much of what the process is like, it's I'm scared that I might break something almost. Um, so for me, it uh, just recently, I've gotten into the, the practice of trying to write a song a day. Um, and I think like for anybody who is trying to write songs, the most important thing is to not be scared to write bad songs because you will. That's just the, the nature of the beast. Um, and, you know, I have I still have CDs of the songs that I wrote when I was 14 and 15. And I listen back now and cringe and and that's just how it goes. It's it's like anything. It's, it takes a lot of work. Um, I do read a lot and I do. Um, I'm a big history nerd. So um, I use those kind of as um, if, if I'm ever feeling stuck, that's kind of what I'll what I'll lean on is uh, where can I throw in a history reference or pull out a, a Dickens quote or something like that. So um, my both of my my dad and my stepmom are actually both English teachers as well. So I was quite um, well versed when it came to different authors and, and even philosophers and things like that. So um, that's kind of where I pull a lot of my inspiration from or even uh, just just simple words, you know, finding finding a word that I hadn't heard before and then diving into its meaning and then being like oh well that'll fit great in a song in two months you know that type of thing so I also I'm on I, I write a lot I journal every day um and that's been huge for me in writing where if I can get stuck I could flip back to what I wrote down two years ago a thought process I had and then apply that to the song I'm writing so you have your journals that obviously from um, several years ago, because you were saying sometimes you, you kind of flip through those as well. Yep. Yeah. And then so you're drawing upon like many different inspirations and there's a, a definite love of words and then the, the influences you were saying from uh, your, your parents as, as well um, as English teachers. Now, where does a melody fit in? Like what, what's coming on first? What's, what, how does it kind of like 
flow out of you or is it different each time? Can we kind of tap into that? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, I think it's different each time. Um, sometimes there are those picture of lightning moments where lyrics and music come at the same time. Um, but in all honesty, those are pretty few and far in between. A lot of the times I'll come up with a melody uh, and it'll be put on a shelf. And then I have lyrics that are on a shelf. And then eventually I sit there and I mash them together. Um, and and sometimes they come out as a song. Um, sometimes it'll start with, with just having a chorus or just having a, a verse. And then thinking back to one of those um, melodies that I had and then that might spark something and then the rest of the song comes. So it changes a lot. Um, lately it's been lyrics first and some of the new, new stuff I've been writing um, just because I've been trying hard to, to write every day and write a song every day. And, and a lot of the times I'm out of melody. Sometimes I think like, I don't know what comes next. Uh, and so some of those just end up being poems in my notebook until the melody comes. Um, so yeah, and that's where it goes back to, you know, I'm, I feel that I'm learning something new every day when it comes to playing guitar and, um, you know, studying, I'm, I'm self-taught. I never had any music classes or anything. So, um, that's where I start diving in and, and teaching myself, you know, more chord progressions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So, um, you're self-taught. So, you're just really kind of like feeling your way around and it sounds like you have a very like an openness and it's like as you're saying it, it changes like right now there's the lyrics kind of coming first and then sometimes it has been like the melody and I love that like lightning bolt kind of like visual you know and sometimes it's there sometimes it isn't and it was interesting Dominic that you had mentioned early on um talking about your um creative process with your songwriting that it's like you can't be afraid. Like you, you can't let that fear kind of be there. Like, yes, it'll be there, but you can't let that like, you know, intimidate you to, to not write or think that something is going to be bad. You got, you really have to go down that river and go through that process is, is what it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, that earnestness and fearlessness, um, is, is paramount to any sort of I think it probably applies to most creative processes, you know, um, I assume that Van Gogh didn't paint the starry night on his first day. And, um, so that's where, and, and also hearing from other songwriters that I admire who have, you know, number one albums and platinum albums and things like that, telling me about how awful their first songs were, um, kind of, it, it again, bridged that we're not alone aspect of things where it was like oh well if if the dude on the top of the charts wrote bad songs then I guess I can too and um and that's where you know I have some songs that I wrote even um a couple years ago that I played live a few times and and you know I wrote it and thought it was best song I ever wrote and then played it live a few times and didn't feel that way so those songs got taken back and um worked on some were reworked and became the songs they are now and some are still on the shelf and might get reworked on another day mm -hmm. so it's really a, it's just like anything it's it's a process and just being open to it not judging it and just kind of you know staying with it and I love that you're saying that now you know you kind of like you know some artists like the word discipline and some don't so I kind of like I don't even like to often say that but for right. lack of a better word you know you're kind of moving now into um, focusing on um, having one song written a day. And that's kind of like an intention that you're setting per day. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a saint. I don't always finish one every day, but the effort there and the exercise of it, um, you know, the yield has been, has been great. Uh, my wife actually even brought it up the other day. She's like, I think you're about writing one every day. And, you know, it's, it's, like working out uh, your body, you know, the more you do it, the the easier it gets and the more weight you can do. So um, that's, it, it's something that I highly recommend to anyone. I, I wish I had been doing this for years. Um, it's only been, you know, a few months of doing it. And um, 
And, you know, I remember when the marrow in my bones came out, you know, there were a few other songs that we cut from the album, but um, I remember kind of scrambling at the last moment thinking like, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. Whereas now I'm kind of on the other end of that scale where I almost have an abundance of songs and, and cutting some of these ones for the next album is, is going to be a very tough process. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it was interesting also, Dominic, that you were saying that, you know, um, there were there some songs that you just were like, yeah, and you felt really good about. And it's like, you know, I really felt like it was coming together from all different angles. And then when you performed it, it was like a whole different feel. So that really goes into the importance of, of playing live. And then that, that takes on like a whole different flavor of, um, of your songs because it's just all of a sudden, you know, some different revelations come in, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. And like the live context is, is one of the most important um, aspects to to my music for me um, because that's what I love to do and it's great it's it's really nice to have albums and and music out there that's doing you know decent and um, you know I have the, the albums on my wall and stuff like that uh, but for me what I love to do is to travel and to play shows and so if it doesn't work in a live context, you know, even if it sounds great on an album, I'm, I'm not really interested. Um, I, I think it, I think it's an unfinished product at that point. Um, yeah, the live show is, is everything. And, and that's why, you know, I, I'm a pretty um, ridiculous human. I don't take too many things seriously, but when it comes to the live show, that's when it, when it's show day, my day is planned down to the minute as far as, uh, you know, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, um, how I'm, how much I'm talking, you know, things like that, because the live show that one hour or hour and a half that I'm on stage is the most important part of the day for me. Mm -hmm. I love your passion and your dedication. And I, I appreciate you sharing that. So it's, you know, there's really that um, on the performance day, it's really like, you know, you just want to give it your all. And then you focus in on these different areas of your life, kind of pacing things, what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. That's, that's really beautiful. And it's, you know, really shows that you really give it your all. This is, this, you know, it's like giving it your all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I don't think that I'm, uh, there's a great uh, quote from Herb Brooks, who is uh, a hockey coach, he coached the U S team in the eighties. And, um, said uh you don't have enough talent to win on talent alone and that's always always stuck with me and, and i'm firmly aware of that that you know my work ethic has to be w way more um you know ex uh, expended than than whatever talent i may think that i have um it has to be work ethic because no one's gonna hand you anything in this industry and you gotta you gotta go out and take it and that that um you know goes into you know i still book my own shows i still i still book my own tours um my email address is on my website so if anybody wants to get in touch it's not just to some random person running my website that email goes straight to me and and sometimes that leads to chaotic situations and both the majority of emails i get are really nice or you know good opportunities and and um, I, that's, you know, I think I even somewhere on my messed up work desk over there, I have, uh, there's the book, our band could be your life, which is all about the DIY punk scene in the eighties in, in the U S and, um, you know, Henry Rollins get in the van was a very big, you know, influence for me where if, if you want a tour, go book one. Don't, you know, there is no point in waiting around for someone to knock on your door and tell you that you can. Yeah, I think this would be another great moment, Dominic, if, if we can hear another one of your songs, please. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, uh, a new one that isn't on Marrow and My Bones. This one's called Haunted Heart. I'm 
miss these haunted halls under which I buried a version of myself. And I hope he doesn't come back. I hope he rots in hell. But the ghosts follow me home. They tug at the walls of my brain. I hope he rots in hell. And I hope I'm not the same. Because I might not make it back. I've been here twice before. And the times I lost track. Trying to keep score. It's a losing game. So why do I play? It's a losing game. And the rules constantly change. Undisclosed location in Texas I can neither confirm or deny my existence I feel like I'm dead And I think I'm in hell With my muscles spasming Why is it snowing in Dallas? I feel like I'm dead What is the meaning of all of this? Because I might not make it back I've been here twice before the times I lost track Trying to keep score It's a losing game So why do I play? It's a losing game And the rules constantly change These haunted halls Drenched in history The peeling pain Feeling pain But they speak to me they say, what's your name? Why are you here? And what are you gonna do to not be back next year? Because I might not make it back. I've been here twice before. And the times I lost track. Trying to keep score. It's a losing game. So why do I play? losing game and the rules constantly change and I'm never coming back no more haunted halls I'm breaking all the rules this game means nothing at all it's a losing game that I can't stand it's a losing game not part of my plan anymore Oh, man, that was awesome. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you know, we really get a full sense of your depth and also your sense of self-discovery. Yeah, uh, and that one um, was is very recent. That one was written last month. And, um, you know, it's something that I uh, originally was a little hesitant to write about. The song is about me actually getting sober. And I'm proud to say that I'm about 65 days sober now. Um, and it was something that I was very hesitant to put in a song or write a song about because it almost, you know, it, it was almost like, is this too honest? And um, kind of slapped myself in the face and said, no, that's the whole point. And, and yeah, so that, that is one of the biggest examples I have right now of um, that, unflinching honesty where it's you know if it makes me i have a rule when i write where it's it's uh if, if it makes me cringe then it's probably true it's probably an irretractable statement that i've made and um that entire song was was something that i struggled I, it took me a couple weeks of thinking you know should i write this song should i play this song um and it, it was almost, you know, there is an aspect of, well, now it's out there and, and people now know that I'm sober and, and will hold me to that, which, you know, isn't a bad thing at all, but uh, certainly was, was a weird type of thing to confess. You know, most of 
most songs that are brutally honest sometimes are mainly about love or relationships or friendships or things like that. And, and a lot of mine are included in that statement. So to have a song that was uncomfortably honest, I thought was, was pretty much putting, putting my money where my mouth was for sure. Well, I'm so glad you had, you know, a brave heart to, to write this song. And I just know it's going to be very inspirational uh, to many, you know, who may be going through, you know, some type of addiction and in some aspects. So, you know, kudos a hundred percent, if not more for you, um, you know, being so courageous and, and being so open and authentic and expressing it so beautifully in, in your acoustic punk style, which is just so awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So what have we not touched upon in your music that you would like to share? We still have a few more minutes and um, let's touch upon something that's uh, important to you in, um, in relationship to what's going on maybe now or, or forthcoming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my, my whole view on my music is, you know, and all art is that it's, it's meant to be shared. Um, I, I, you know, would love that maybe in, you know, 20, 30 years from now, you know, there'd be somebody around a campfire who could play one of my songs and people would know it, you know, like that, you know, is the definition of a folk song to me, um, where it becomes a communal property. It's not, it's, you know, once I write something and put it out, it's, it's really no longer mine. Like, of course, I, I'll reap the benefits of it, but um it's it's more for everyone to enjoy and and make their own like um i'm a big fan of of bands that do covers of other band songs i think that you know it it shows that the song itself is a communal property that is for everyone to enjoy and everyone to share um so that's really important to me and i think with that comes you know the traveling aspect like i've always loved to travel um I, like i said i book my own tours uh and and a lot of that is through just kind of uh being hard-headed enough to send enough emails and and call enough people and meet strangers to put it together and to me it's that's the honest way to do it it's it's if you want to tour you, you know there's there's work to do and sometimes it's not going to work out sometimes when it does it's going to be the best thing you've ever done um you know i've seen not as not nearly as much of the our country as i would like to but i've seen quite a bit of our country just through playing music and sharing you know my songs with people and and seeing different reactions in different parts of the country and and hearing different stories of of how people grew up and and realizing that there are cultural differences even just with you know while touring the country, the majority of people are Americans. Um, there's different cultures inside America, and and like that was something that um, I'm I'm very happy to to do and to still keep doing. I actually have a show in Nashville later this month, um, where you know it's it's all just you know for me I was a very introverted person. Uh, I didn't really like to meet new people too much, to be honest, and. I had to get over that if I wanted to to play shows outside of my hometown, and um, I'd, I'm happy to say that it, it's gone reasonably well so far. Yeah, and you know, Dominic, I love that you share that. Um, you know that you really have broken so many like uh, inner like boundaries and, and shells. You know, um, with all the different things that that you've been sharing with us. And um, you just keep stepping up to the plate. You step up to the plate. You step up to the plate. And, and that's really beautiful. And I know you're just going to go really far with your music. And um, I would love to know, what are some places that are just like, wow, this is like the zenith. This is just, you know, where in your mind, you just, you know, you're like, oh, man, I would just love to play there. Can you share some of those places with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um... I would like to do California. Um, LA does scare me, I think, but but I would like to to do that. Seattle's definitely on the list. Um, you know, I've you know I I I grew up right after Kurt Cobain passed away, but I've read plenty of books about Kurt, uh, Jimi Hendrix as well, both being from Seattle. Um, 
New York City would be fun. I've heard that um, they're actually very receptive to, um, to to traveling musicians, which you know some states aren't. Um, I, I've been lucky to have played in Nashville quite a few times already, um, and I'm going back to play again this month. Um, but it is, you know, it is a tough place to get booked uh, when you come in as a newcomer. Um, you know, really, I guess the best answer would be, I want to play anywhere I haven't been yet. And, you know, that's that's high on my list. I mean, I have a, in my wallet at all times, I have a map that has uh, check marks off on the states that I've already played. And uh, there's only about 10 of them. So there's 40 more states to go. Yeah. And then once that is complete, which I imagine it will be, then it's going to be uh, traveling abroad. Absolutely. Yeah. There were plans for um, a UK run. Uh, COVID did get away in, in the way of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, traveling alone was, was a love of mine. And then once I put the two together, I was like, oh, I can travel and play these shows. It was that was another light switch moment where I realized I was like, this is not a short term thing for me. This is something that I want to do for, for life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Dominic, this has been such a joy to connect with you and dive into your music and your journey and your passion. I'm wondering if we can just take a moment before we close out the show. Um, those that are watching um, who may already be in a band, maybe even a little bit more seasoned, or those that maybe just started or thinking about it, um, you have a lot of wisdom to offer. What, what could you share with them in terms just of advice? Yeah. Just don't stop. Keep doing it. Um, you're going to get a lot of no's if, if you look at, if you want to book your own tours or even your own shows in your own hometown, you know. Um, I would say expect a thousand no's and then don't think about them because the one yes that you get is going to feel amazing. Um, and, you know, your art's your own. Don't let anybody take it away from you or try and make it something it's not. Um, be yourself, be honest, be humble, and you'll, you'll do all right. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much, Dominic, for being a guest today on Art and Talk. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, best wishes with everything and continued success with your album and uh, going to Nashville and your traveling. And stay in touch with us. Let us know how things develop as they um, move on the horizon for you, which, which I'm sure that they will. Yeah, absolutely. I hope to speak to you again. All right. Thank you so much, Dominic. Thank you everyone for watching Art and Talk. We so appreciate the time you take to watch our artist videos. Please stay connected with us on social media. You can connect with us on Facebook and also on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe and like, we appreciate your support. All right, so we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.